Hello friends, welcome to Data Bicep. Few weeks back, I made a video on whether you need MBA for the new age of data analytics and artificial intelligence. Last week, I was invited to IIM Kashipur to interact with their PGP final year students. One thing that struck me there that each and everyone who was sitting on the desk or maybe who is preparing MBA today needs to work significantly with intelligent machines for most of their career. So I try to understand how these IMs are preparing the students to face the new world of data analytics and artificial intelligence. To do that, I spoke to many students and few professors as well. I think if you are planning to do your MBA, you might get few informations too. So please watch the video till the end and please let us know what you think or if you have any suggestions for that. Please like, comment, subscribe to Data Bicep for more videos on career in artificial intelligence. On a gloomy day at IIM Kashipur, I met one of India's greatest minds in applied economics who actively helps the Indian government to shape up business, economics and public policies. Professor Maithi was the chairman of MBA program of IIM Kashipur till last year and now heads student admission for all new generation IIMs. He is extremely passionate about teaching economics, bringing industries to campus and has been my true friend for last 35 years. Being a professional from industry, my first question to Professor Maithi was why there is a gap between industry expectations and what they teach in B schools. Hello sir, how are you doing today? I am doing good, thank you. Thank you for being with us today and thank you for visiting IIM Kashipur. Thank you, thank you. And I have been planning this for quite a while and thanks for your time today. Thank you. So, I have a couple of questions and I always think why is it so? Because being a person from industry, whenever we come to B school, we try to hire a lot of students from here but we always see there is a gap. And we always see that they cannot be readily deployed. But the reason we come to a B school thinking that the students we will hire, we can deploy them readily on the floor. But we don't get that. Why do you think? What are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a very good question actually. And sometimes we ourselves wonder that. Uh, I think there are uh, several reasons for that. Uh, one very important reason in the context of India at least is that uh, many uh, people think that right out of graduation they should do their MBA uh, whereas uh, the truth is that they should probably spend some time in the industry <laughs> and then come back and do their MBA because then probably they can relate to the concepts that we discuss in class. Uh, uh, they can appreciate those concepts much better uh, if they at least know how an organization works. So that is one thing. Another thing is that uh, in many cases what uh, can be solved is uh, maybe through, a, through a, a better collaboration between mm -hmm. industry and academia so that if we work more closely with industry in solving the business problems mm -hmm. uh, then that can also be brought uh, in the classroom in much more nuanced way then uh, if we solely depend on our previous experience <laughs> in working in the industry. Uh, so that is another aspect that maybe more industry academic collaboration is needed. So does having just an academic knowledge enough? Let's find that out. Another problem especially in the context of AI is that uh, the way research in AI is progressing, it is moving too fast. <laughs> Right, so, so uh, what students are learning in one trimester, in one year, uh, much of that might actually be more advanced when they go and join the industry. So that, that means you are saying that academia is always catching up with what is happening in the industry? Uh, it is uh, one way, yes. Okay. In one way, academia probably is catching up. Uh, if we rely too much on the textbooks and don't pay attention to what is happening in the industry. Uh, but also another way I think uh, uh, the other is also true that in certain cases uh, what we find that if uh, students are more advanced than what industry is ready right now to accept then probably students themselves they might get discouraged that 
maybe we should we should follow more of industry accepted knowledge the next important question was that what does mba student perceives about the world of technology versus what is the reality let's see what the professor has to say okay actually from that i can possibly share an observation that and especially i've seen it is true for various mba schools that whenever a technology company comes to hire they all are treated as second class citizens and especially when we nowadays say that every company is a technology company today every company is a data company today technology and advanced ai is the future so why is still the notion there that technology companies are always a second class citizens <laughs> So at least at the context of I am Kashipur, I say that is not the case. Obviously, uh, we we love technology companies uh, to be the uh, to be our first visitors during Christmas season. Uh, uh, one reason uh, why technology company uh, might not be the first choice for some students is that. uh they might have a set idea about what technology is or how technology is used uh in business <laughs> right so one problem might be that especially if so we want students with more work experience right but if a student has worked in some type of technology and the student has not seen uh the the various different uses of technology in different organizational context mm -hmm. then the student may not be able to appreciate all the different uh, different uh, avenues that uh, new technology has to offer mm -hmm. to solve business problems mm -hmm. right so uh, <coughs> because placement is always a student driven process so if <laughs> the students are running the process then they might might think that okay maybe some other domain might be more preferable to me uh until and unless they see what how technology is being used in 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 the context of business today so that is one problem another problem is that uh it it is probably inertia right <laughs> that if you look at the placement in earlier years and you know that okay these are the companies which hired in mass and then uh a sort of hard behavior says seen and we will go through the motion right uh without going getting out of the comfort zone mm -hmm. and exploring that what different opportunities are there uh so that might also be the case but i think that is changing mm -hmm. uh and students are now more open to technological roles they are more open to uh open to different uh, possible mm -hmm. job uh, opportunities that uh, can be can be can be availed of mm -hmm. uh with the more with the better uses of technology right so i think the situation is changing right. uh, but the funny question was that does he actually know what the students think you know the funny thing even today morning i was interacting with few students and i asked them the question that hey you want to come to the world of analytics but can you code and all i got a blank stare so when you say it's changing so As as a professor, I would like to understand what's your side of the story. So you actively talk to students, saying that hey, you need to code, you need to learn technology because that's where things are moving. Irrespective of the career that you choose, or or it's still something gung ho that people think that once they are out of B schools, they become CEO on day one. <laughs> No, probably they are afraid that because they know that you are very good in coding, so they are afraid to and they are mad in front of you. Probably. But yeah, but uh, but yeah, no, no, that is that is obviously uh, an issue that some students may think that when they come to an MBA program and when they join a business school, uh, you will make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. But even if let's say let's say from day one you become the decision maker. but still you need to be able to understand what your subordinates are bringing to you right mm -hmm. what they are putting on the table in front of you and until and unless you know what is going on there uh you are never going to appreciate uh what is a good solution and what is a bad solution absolutely absolutely if that is true then why globally people are doing mba especially from technology after 8 to 10 years of industry experience but this is something always intrigued me and i'm just picking your word in here i have seen really the two ends of the spectrum 
one spectrum just like what I said and you write you said that someone thinks that since I am doing a business course why shall I go back to technology but I have seen at least globally it's more prominent that people after spending eight to ten years in technology they are coming back to do an MBA for a couple of years and then they go back again in the world of technology. And it's especially happening for the emerging technologies like artificial intelligence. So what do you think? Is it a trend that's still a foreign trend or it's changing in India as well? Um, I would say that in India, uh, if someone is going back to school after eight nine years of experience they are probably more even now they are probably more focused towards executive education route mm -hmm. and not probably a full-time MBA program uh, but I think we are going to see that pattern change in India as well in future uh, because see the problem is once you are in an organization for seven eight nine years or you are in a specific role for seven eight nine years then there is a very high chance that you will get typecast that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you get uh, set for a particular type of role and you don't you don't get to see the other other size of the organization how the decision is being made in the broader organization context yeah. uh, but once you spend some time in the in the corporate in an in an organization setting you realize that if you if you have to move up if you have to go to a to a decision making role or to a more prominent role you need to know how different parts of the organization works mm -hmm. and uh, then you realize the value of mba that <laughs> the mba will give you that that bar's eye view right mm -hmm. and you will get to know about the different functions mm -hmm. within the organization through a more structured way of learning to, through through an MBA, so that is that is why uh, people come back after they they see what they have to do to to progress further. What are these new age MBAs, especially the specialized ones? The more specialized MBAs will be higher in demand in future. MBA in analytics, more specialized MBA where, where not MBA in general management but MBA in analytics. Those things will be more in demand. They will be higher in demand because. Uh, you are still getting to know how an organization functions. You are still getting to know how different parts of the organization. But the focus is on technology. So you coming back to your first question, you are hiring the students, but you find them on day one they are not they are not job ready. If people are doing more technology focused MBA mm -hmm. or in in US STEM MBAs, uh, they will know much better how the organizations are moving. Mm -hmm. how they are becoming more technology driven, how they are becoming more data driven and that I think actually going to help not only the students in, in going to more prominent roles but that will also help I think the organizations because they now are in a much better position to contribute from, from day one. But what is the single most critical thing MBA students learn in the school? One thing that probably we concentrate the most uh, in MBA analytics is that we train students to ask question. It means uh, the hypothesis creation. Yes, or okay. the research question, or basically critical thinking. Uh, because one thing we realize, and this is especially true in the context of India, uh, is that uh, when we go through our school education, when we go through our college education, in most of the cases, we are encouraged to only memorize <laughs> and not think critically. So when students come to us, we find that one of the biggest problem is that to change the way they solve a problem. Okay. So instead of going back to the set process of solving a problem or looking for solutions somewhere, we force them to think think critically, think out of the box and think how the solution can be found without looking anywhere, looking any for any traditional sources, looking for any anything that someone might have done before okay. and trying to come up with the answer themselves. So two steps here. One thing is that we, we train them to ask the right question, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, that is probably the most important thing, most difficult thing. Once they understand how to ask the right questions, we train them to find the solution using the, the technology. It's very interesting because 
in the world where uh, the tire hits the road that means uh, in the industry where you need to solve real problems which impacts either people life or overall society one thing i have realized a lot of time the good idea fails because someone couldn't narrate it well i always say that you cannot be a good data analyst unless you are a good storyteller using data so if i'm hearing you right that is where you focus a lot in this mbas that means how you define the questions how you find the answers and how you tell the answer in a way that becomes a solution in itself so that people can accept that is that something what is the critical thing or the crown jewel of these courses and we like to take a joke to our incoming students every year that you give a monkey a computer and a software some data and give the monkey some time even the monkey will punch some numbers <laughs> but that is not your job your okay. job is to ask the right question and then use the tools you have to find the answer and finally what we conclude that's pretty interesting and, and if i just uh, paraphrase what you said few things what students would definitely need one is to understand what the problem is ask the right set of question and then leverage technology to solve it right and that's where most of these b school guys will get in because definitely they won't be a coder they would be a problem solver and a decision maker but for that they need to really understand where the world is going knowing that always helps okay i can hear what that you're saying yes please let us know if you like the video and please do not forget to subscribe us for more videos on career in artificial intelligence thank you we will meet again next week till then bye bye thanks for watching data bicep please subscribe for regular feed on career in artificial intelligence